Hey, hello there. This is a tutorial on how to build your own curved tangent transfer. So in the previous tutorial, I showed you how this tool works. I'm selling this tool on Blender Market, but it's uh, quite easy to build it yourself as well. So here you see the character. It's the uh, uh, model from, from Yaro Pro on Sketch Fop. And he made this model, this scan of this person. It looks really nice. And this is the uh, tool that I made that you can make it like it's painted or brushed. I animated it as well, as you can see here. You see that it goes from one style to another. Uh, it also goes like thin, as you can see here. You can give it thin strokes, you can give it really thick strokes. So it looks really rough or really small. So you can see all the details still in the model. And here, if I stop it, and I go to the geometry nodes. This is the setup. Here we have, uh, we can actually delete this. With this grid, it's like a small panel, as we can see here. These are all the panels, the grids. I take the UV map, I store it away as brush UV because I'm projecting a brush onto it. As you can see here, that it's a little bit rough. And there's also a bit of texture in it. I transform it to be uh, <coughs> slightly above the model and also I made it a 0.3 scale. I give it a material brush as you can see here. Material if we go to br not arrow but brush and then go to our nodes. Here you can see what I did. Um, I'm taking a UV map, a UV brush. I'm combining this uh, into with a noise texture and also the texture of the object so this is the object texture that came uh, with the scan model uh, and I'm combining it to give it a little bit of texture so actually you can also just use these ones As you can see if I plug it in it loses the texture but it keeps all the colors it has to calculate for a little while so here you can see that it has the colors of the model itself so where the instance is placed on the model, it takes the color from that point and then uh, gives the whole instance that color. So you see it really that the whole brush stroke has the same color. And then if we take the noise as well, I give the, take the noise and make it a bump. And I also uh, use the alpha to give it a little bit of brush at the end. Here I use a gradient, like a spherical one. So only the ends of the brush stroke are uh, a little bit scattered. If I plug this one in again, it also has like a hue saturation that you can adjust. And uh, also like a little bit of texture in the brush strokes. So it really looks more like paint. And I put it all in a brush material node. And if we go back into the geometry nodes, then we have here this curved tangent transfer. And it takes the uh, brush as an instance. It takes a be Bezier curve as the direction. And it takes the mesh as where it should put all the instances on. So if we go and we look over here, um, let's close this. We have the Bezier curve. We can turn this one off. Uh, there's a little bit weird material on it now. The brush material, this should be the material zero. Here we see the scan. We go into Bezier curve. You see that I drawn onto the, the guy. I turn this one off. You see it has all these, these lines and all the brush strokes follow the lines. So if I go into this and I'm gonna turn it on I go into the Bezier curve and I take the draw on surface, as you can see. I can draw here and you see that it follows the curve. And you can use this tangent transfer. So the tangent of the curve is transferred to the brush stroke instances. That's actually what's happening. So I can uh, just make drawings and make it go wherever I want. So if we go back into the model uh, and go into the node group, this is what's happening. So we take the mesh 
uh, we capture the normal of the mesh, so the direction of the, the faces of the 3D scan, and then we project uh, points onto it. You can I made also a switch, so you can project it just on the mesh points, but the scan is quite chaotic already, so that would look kind of the same. Uh, but here with the distribute points node, you can also set a distance between the points so you can have less and bigger uh, point distribution. That's quite handy in this case. Uh, then what we do, we take the normal of the faces of the scan, we uh, do a line Euler to vector and we plug it into the vector, the Z, and then we do another align Euler to vector and then take the Y and the pivot at Z and what we are taking here is the curve. And then with the curve, I did here curve to mesh and mesh to curve. I can actually mute that. Maybe not, it does a little bit different. Uh, then we capture the tangent of the curve. So as you can see here, if I go up, we select that curve here. And then we are taking here the curve tangent. Then we convert the curve to a mesh and we sample the index uh, and sample nearest. And we are taking the tangent of uh, that, that uh, curve. And then we plug it into the instances on point. So that's actually quite simply explained how to create this curve tangent transfer. And I'm using it for brush strokes now, but you can use it for a lot of other things. Like it's really logical to use it for paintings, but you can also maybe make like a water flow and then draw how you want to have the flow. So you can uh, be really make custom uh, flow patterns in uh, your instances, instances that you project. So here you can see it fully make it a bit bigger so we have a clear view so that's how this one works and if we then go up again like it outputs all these instances i give it a little bit of a random value uh, i animated it so they get bigger and smaller as well so if we go here you see that it's 1.5 here it's uh, also scaling here that's why they are so narrow here. As you can see they go bigger here, 0.15. Then what I do here is I uh, create an attribute for the, for the UV map. And I'm uh, putting the color of this model into it. So here you can see again the material uh, of that color. If we go into rendering and then we look at the color. So this is the... Uh, UV map of the scan and it uses this color for uh, all the instances to give all the point instances the color of this UV map so if we go back into nodes so here uh, we send it to the UV map so it knows where the color is where uh, what color is where and then what I do here is I take a random value so first I take the domain size, how many instances are there, how many brush strokes are there, and then I use that uh, to know the max amount of uh, random values it generates. The index is uh, the ID of where they are, like which br brush stroke is where, and then with this map range I just project uh, random colors everywhere. So every one of these brush strokes is a random color. So this is brush index. If I go to shading here, and then I need my brush material, brush material and go there. And then uh, I take the attribute and then let's go back to catch the name brush index. And you can see what what is actually happening. Brush index. I plug that into the color. Then here you should see color no, instance there. There you go. 
So here you see that like the all they have is a random color and I use that over here. Brush index color and use it as a vector displacement. So the noise texture is different on all of these little panels because if they're all the same, then you will see that in the in the brush stroke that it's a copy of the brush stroke. But we want all the brush strokes to have like a slightly different pattern, and that's why we use this random color everywhere. So if we go back here, I can also show you uh, by doing this that the color changes. So then you have an idea what's happening here and why we do it. So if we go back into the shading and then we plug in our brush material again, we see that all the colors are correct again. And then we combine this one with the brush strokes. So the top line is just the model and the bottom line is the brush strokes. So if I cut this, you see here the model. And if I cut this one, you just see the brush strokes. And here I combine them, so the gaps are filled. But if we go make them a little bit bigger, then there are no gaps anymore. But uh, yeah, it gives a little bit better look this way. So this is, was the tutorial on how to build this curved tangent transfer. Here you can see it again if you want to build it yourself. But you can also get this whole setup. Uh, I also put all of this in a node group so it's easier to uh, put that on your own model so you don't have to build this uh, so it's a lot easier if you uh, get it on blender market but if you want to build it yourself here is the guide to do it okay bye